welcome. Join me on Tar Earth Angel for an interview with successful artist and author Bear Cloud, born a seer and now a respected wisdom keeper in his lovely home in Sedona, Arizona. Thank you so much for opening your home to us and allowing us in. And um, why you are sitting in front of an amazing piece of artwork? And why don't we just start with that because it, it is it is quite wonderful. Well, thank you. Yes. This is my newest painting called Thunder Mountain. It came to me after a series of visions that I had over the past four years, actually, as the economy and everything was going through its hoops and whatnot. I kept seeing this wind storms blowing through everything and kind of uh, turning things a little upside down and backwards through the past few years. And then all of a sudden, I saw the, uh, the light begin to clear and that things were starting to refine its harmony again and now I saw the clouds opening up and the light coming through after this hard rain had cleansed everything off, you yes. know? And so that's kind of what this painting has to do with. It, it's a, an understanding like that. And there's many things that are going on inside the painting. For those who aren't familiar with my paintings, if you look closely, you can see like up here there's an eagle in the cloud. Yes. It's like his wings have opened up and, and down this light to come through like that. And there's what I call ancient ones down here and uh, in the stones who hold the understanding over time for those who need to hear it and they can, people can listen to those ancient ones and hear their voice, you know? There's uh, 13 ravens in here. 13 ravens, that has to do with the 13 moon cycle. There's 13 moons in one year. And for me, it has to do with them with the magic that sits in each moon. And so, I like that. And, and then, the painting keeps going on. There's a spirit in the wind. Looking at the sun coming through here like that. Mm -hmm. Bringing a voice to the wind. Yes. Yeah, so, um, but I feel like it uh, was a magical painting for me. So. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And I think we can all relate to those times in our lives when it's dark and stormy, and we're hoping the sun's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It kind of expresses that understanding. Yes. It's, it's got a, a hidden message in it. I don't know if you can see it in your camera or not, but the, the square of the canvas, you see that there's a, almost like a, a circle that, that's created as it goes around like this, yes. almost to the corners of the canvas, the edge of the uh, canvas, all the way around. It's kind of a very subtle circle. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's a very ancient symbol that you can find in pictographs that goes way back. And uh, I've found it uh, go back to six, 7,000 years. And, it, and, it's, and one way to understand that symbol is in harmony. In harmony. It's a square inside the circle. The square is like the matrix of our physical world. It's the square of all the things that are going to fire and water that were made of the circle the spirit and that which has no beginning and end to it. And so when it's placed perfectly inside of there, it means the perfection of the spirit in our inner world or inner harmony like that. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and as a child growing up, mm -hmm. what was it like for you? Well, I'm from a nation called Nankongska, which means, translates to a word that means children of the middle water. I'm also known as uh, um, Washashe, which means the tall ones. And um, uh, at one time we were the biggest nation in North America, but now it's pretty small. But, um, uh, but you know, I grew up on the res and, and um, when I was old enough to go to school, I ended up going to Caucasian school, which is very different. And so um, uh, when I got out of that, I began to do my ceremonies again. I followed it as I went along, but I, I, I I began to do my ceremonies and, and follow the ways and the traditions and my painting got stronger into that. And then uh, I reached a point where uh, all my ceremonies, my paintings were evolving out of all the ceremonies I was doing and that's what you see now. Mm -hmm. So, mm. yeah. And, and where where was this that you grew up? Uh, Nyakongska, Oklahoma. And, and where I went to school in uh, Emerald, Texas. Oh. And so, mm -hmm. and, and <laughs> <laughs> but what are you going to do? So, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so, 
but uh, uh, once I once I uh, uh, was able to find my way through all that, then then uh, uh, I, I headed to the mountains. That's where I really wanted to be, and yeah. and that's where I started following my really started following my traditions. I've gone up and to some uh, relatives and some caves in New Mexico, and we were doing ceremony up in some high caves. And, like so has spirit always been very strong with you your whole life? You know, it, it goes through your phases and steps. Yes. Okay, I'm on the path. I've been on the path. I was born a vision seeker, a seer. And it's part of my mission in life. And that came with me since I was born. I was five years old, I was drawing and bringing images forward and, you know, that I was seeing in my visions and whatnot. But it had still had like a seven or eight or nine-year-old mentality to it, you know, 13 and all that. I painted, but, you know, when I was 13, but, it, you know, it isn't like this. Mm -hmm. It was like 13, you know, right. and, but it had a different doorway to it. It had a different way because I was pulling in things of spirit even at that time, and, uh, you know, and I was trying to do more of that even when I was small, so, mm -hmm. you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, um, so tell me about when your your artistry started. Did it, you said it, from a young child, yeah, actually. Yeah, when I was drawn five, when I was five, there's three mountains that impacted me very deeply. That that began when I was five years old, and and so maybe sooner, you know, I'm sure. But I was drawing them all, all the time. I remember I was at these three mountains, and I painted them when I was old enough to paint, and um, and. It was somewhere much later, after I had gotten out of school, that I went on a tour of Arizona and went over the top of the mountain. There were some three mountains that I had, had fallen in and visioned for mm -hmm. my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very magical event at that time, and some things happened at that moment that was magical for me, you know. and. Uh, it's quite a story. It's how I begin my book, Seven Fires, and it's uh, it becomes like an eight-year transition actually from that point. But, ah. uh, very, ah. very special. So now you you mentioned Seven Fires. Can you tell us a little more about the book? What is what is the basis of your book? My book, Seven Fires, um, spun out of it, it, it was a couple of different directions that 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 book became important. You know, one of the things that uh, I was noticing is that I had become involved in the crop circles in England back in 1998. And there was some absolutely magical things that were appearing on this planet in those fields. I could look into them and I could see and I knew what was inside of those things. And I could tell that there was something far more than what a lot of people were really uh, understanding what was going on in there. And I we had the ability to look into them and see, and I began illustrating them out, and everybody was just fascinated by what was hidden inside of them. One, one club circle, I found over 52 symbols inside of it. You know, it was like a book of spiritual knowledge. And it was the first one I ever walked inside of. And I illustrated out and showed it geometrically why it all existed, you know. And it was very, very special. And um, <clears throat> as time went along, there was a few of those that, that appeared. That you, there was a really strong question as to where that really came from, because these messages that were in here were of such an order that it really can't be expressed in words. The highest attitude that that perhaps. Uh, 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 a native elder might have, or a Rinpoche, a Lama, for the Buddhist people, that type of order, you know, of consciousness and understanding was inside those Starbucks and the hidden messages, and, and it was really special, really mm. magical. Mm. And um, um, as time went along, four or five years later, what I began to see was is that I, I would, my vision said, you know, people were getting caught in the hoopla of the golf circles in a moment. And I saw all this bickering back and forth over what is real and what isn't real. And it's just 
thing that happens among that community. And I'm going, oh, this is not good. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I said, you know, these things are important. So we need to do something with them. And I went back and I had a look at one of the ones that I knew was really important just to see how many people were looking at those and what was happening with them. Or maybe people were noticing them and said, hey, maybe we need to you know, do more with this ourselves or something. But when I went back and looked, you know what I saw? I saw one person had looked at that, and that was me, because I had just looked at it. And nobody, nobody was going back and looking on. What I realized was, is that this gift that was being given to us at this point was being lost in the vapors of the internet. And I could see that on the road it was on, that it wasn't going to be real long before it just disappeared and became history in some lost archive of the internet somewhere. Probably maybe one day somebody would open up and go, look, there's something important here. But yeah, I could see it getting lost. And, and that was that was really sad. I go, we can't let this happen. Right. So I, um, I began to start to write my book, Seven Fires. Out of that book, as I was working on it, and as I was working on this crop circle, other visions began to flow into my world that had to do with pyramids in Egypt. Pyramids, um, I was asked by a friend in England if I would look at a book and see if I would find any overlapping commonality between native symbols and Egyptian. But as I was looking in this book, I didn't, I, I didn't really see that. What I saw was commonality in crop circles and, and to some things in there that were significantly important, you know, that were of the Egyptian way. And I began to get visions about the pyramids and part of their secrets and what they had to do with. Okay? And so I began mapping that out on paper to show people what this had to do with. Now, I never had an interest in Egypt. It's just that I'm a seer and vision seeker. And when that started crossing my path, I honored that vision and, and I had to open up those doors and let that flow in. And for 10 years after that, I was given some very magical visions about why the pyramids were created the way they were. And it's a lot of what people think it has to do with. Very little about what the archaeologists and Egyptologists have to do with, who think it's a tomb and that sort of thing. It's, it's much, much, much more than that. And, uh, but I was shown in a vision why the ancient mystics built them the way they did. I come to understand that every pyramid was completely different than the next one to it. There was no, it was completely different. There was nothing common other than that they were a pyramid, okay? Each one had its own language, its own understanding, its own truth, its own way of nature or spirit, and it followed a sequence that was planned by the ancient mystics before the first one was ever even made to follow a sequence all the way down through the last pyramid of the Giza Plateau. Okay? It was all planned ahead of time. And I show why that's all sequenced out, what it has to do with. Mm -hmm. And it's a magical star language that people have not been able to see. Oh you know, and, and I outline it completely in my book, what that has to do with fully illustrated. It's right there in black and white in front of you. You can see it for yourself, you know.